Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this 14th of June 2020 here in Saratoga, California. This is our 14th uh, presentation that we are putting out there uh, for a virtual Sunday service. Thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Good, gracious, and glorious God, again we thank you for your faithful and abiding presence. We thank you for your life-giving word that brings us comfort, hope, and inspiration. Lift our spirits in praise before you now, for you alone are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Enjoy now this prelude music. O oh, happy day. uplifting and energetic peace as we gather together on this Lord's Day. We have reason to rejoice today, of course, because God has promised to be with us, and it is in him that we find our victory. And yet, we gather at a very somber and sober time in our nation, as more than 115,000 people have now perished due to the COVID virus and more than two million in our country have contracted the virus, more than seven and a half million worldwide. In addition, for more than two weeks, our nation's city streets have been filled with protests and problems following the death of George Floyd on Memorial Day, May the 25th. Indeed, this is a challenging time in our nation and in our world. We ache to hear the good news and we are blessed to hear it this morning in Holy Scripture. As our communities begin to open up, as followers of Christ, let us continue to keep the other in mind and to be good examples of Christ's care and faithfulness in the community. Please take care and use caution. It is important, especially in these days, as we uh, long to gather together again, uh, to do our best to connect with every member of our community. If you're watching at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, please join us at the conclusion of the service 
for a live Zoom gathering uh, where there will be virtual coffee and real-time conversation. Also on our church website, every morning by 9 o'clock, there is the Daily Bread devotional that is being posted. Uh, that hour, 9 o'clock, is also a time to gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer. If you'd like to join us for Bible study, uh, Wednesdays at 10 o'clock in the morning or Thursdays at 6.30, you are welcome to join us. Please let me know and I will send you a link to the live Zoom meeting. And let us know your needs. If you need grocery shopping, uh, pick up prescriptions, or if your neighbors need uh, either one of those, please let us know. We have people standing by ready to assist. A shout out of happy birthday today to Chrissy, Delon, Kara, and Marcia. We thank God for you and pray that God will richly bless you today and in the coming year with all that is good. And on behalf of our entire church community, thank you for your ongoing commitment to the ministry and mission of our Lord in and through Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Thank you for your faithfulness in reaching out to other members of this community. And thank you for your financial support. Your donations by mail and online are critical in helping us continue our ministry and to support our staff. If you're new to Emmanuel and would like to support our ministry, you can do so online at the Givelify app or by PayPal. Thank you for your generosity. And finally, if this service is a benefit to you, please share the news, uh, share with each other, and spread the message. Thank you for joining us. However these days are affecting you and whatever you are going through, know that God, who is gracious, compassionate, and abounding in steadfast love, will hold you fast in his love for you, in Jesus Christ our Lord.
Thank you, Alyssa, Jody, and Anton for that wonderfully uplifting piece, uh, for sharing your gift of music with us today. What a wonderful encouragement. And now we turn to God's word uh, for this Sunday in Pentecost. Our first scripture, and I will be sharing two with you this morning. The first is from the 100th Psalm. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. In the second reading for today, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. The evangelist writes, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dearly beloved of God, grace, mercy, and peace be to you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, we are now in the season of Pentecost. I want to take you back just a little bit as we remember the day of Ascension when Jesus promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit, the power of God, would come upon them and give them the energy and the authority that they needed to go and make disciples of all nations. Not many days thereafter was the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit did come down to empower the church and to energize the disciples to be about the work of Christ, the work of God in the world. And now in this season of Pentecost, we experience the transition, the passing on of the ministry from Jesus to his disciples, which we find in our gospel reading for today. God involves us in the building up of his church and in the work of his kingdom. Just before we open the scripture for today, the verse preceding this, the religious leaders, the Pharisees said of Jesus, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. It is in the face of fake news and sinister slander that Jesus goes about his work. And we read about his work, Matthew describes for us here, in Matthew chapter 9, the work of Jesus teaching, preaching the good news or the gospel of the kingdom and healing every form of disease. Healing every form of disease. Even COVID-19 would not stump our Lord. Now many may object at this and say, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, that those have become almost empty words. This is no cop-out, however. No, not at all. 
This, in fact, is where faith and science meet. For those who are working in the scientific field, those who are seeking a, a vaccine, seeking a cure for this, we must pray that God would lead and guide them into that discovery, into his ways of truth, that God would grant them wisdom to discern the inner workings of this virus, to arrive in an effective vaccine, to discover a cure to combat and to overcome this deadly and devilish virus. For what is the devil's work but to seek, to kill and destroy? Jesus went about his ministry, preaching, teaching, and healing every form of disease. This tri-faceted work of our Lord. We also find here in this passage the heart of Jesus. Jesus felt compassion for those who were harassed and helpless. He took their side. He was with them in their suffering. He looked upon them and saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd, people without a leader. In the book of Numbers, which I'm sure is one of your favorite books of the Bible, in the book of Numbers chapter 27, there is a time where Moses is nearing the end of his career as a leader of the people of Israel. He has spent almost 40 years in the wilderness leading the children of Israel to the promised land. And now Moses is concerned about the one who would take over for him. We read in chapter 27, verse 15, Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God of all the spirits of mankind, appoint a man over this community to go out and to come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so that the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. We see here in the heart of Moses a heart of compassion for the people of God. And God answered Moses' prayer by providing Joshua and empowering Joshua to take over for Moses to receive his mantle of leadership. That heart, that heart of God, is perfectly exemplified in Jesus, God's Son, who looked upon those who were harassed and helpless and had compassion upon them. And so where you find the harassed and helpless in our world today, you can be sure you will also find Jesus. And there must his followers be as well, if they are to be his followers indeed, and not just in name only. We are also introduced to the vision of Jesus in this passage, and it is a marvelous, wonderful vision. Jesus declares that the harvest is plentiful, all the rest of them could see were foul and fallow fields. But Jesus could see the fertile and future results that work in those fields could do. In fact, more workers were needed, Jesus said. Jesus would indeed involve his disciples, as we shall soon see, but he would involve yet more. And he's calling your name. This morning. Ask the Lord of the harvest, he says. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. Well, how does that happen? Raising awareness in the hearts of God's people to the needs of the world, that their ears are open to the cries of the harassed and helpless and leaderless, stirring lethargic hearts with passion to serve, igniting an inflaming spiritual desire, that it might increase to the extent that it will create a compulsion to take part in God's harvest field. There will be a plentiful harvest, Jesus says. Extra hands are always needed, for the harvest will not and cannot be fully reaped until the final day. And until that day comes of Christ's reappearing, there is plentiful and glorious work to be done. Last Sunday, we listened to Jesus in an all-encompassing mountaintop mandate, where Jesus 
told his disciples that he had all authority. He sent them to speak to all nations, to teach them everything he had commanded, and told them that he would always be present with them to the very last day. And here, the one with all authority shares it with his disciples. For they could not endeavor to do the work of Christ without it. Without the authority of Christ, neither can we accomplish anything in God's harvest field. Indeed, we're called to step forward in faith. But we are not to walk ahead of God, but to wait upon the Lord, to look upon the Lord, and to pray before the Lord who will authorize the work to be done and grant us the power to complete it. In these days of sheltering in place, perhaps like me, you have seen many people out exercising, much more than in ordinary days. Some are out walking, some are out running, some are out cycling, some are out walking their dogs, and some dogs are out walking their owners. I'm sure you've seen it. Those dogs tugging at the leash, taking the lead. You've got to admire their passion and their enthusiasm. But God would have us follow his lead and to recognize that even in our leadership, we are followers first. In this passage, we also see the commissioning of Jesus as Jesus went about his threefold ministry of teaching, preaching, and healing, so he commissions his disciples to do the same. <clears throat> Here they are called apostles, ones who are sent out by the Lord on the mission to which he sends them. And certainly this job description that he gives was well outside their expertise. These tasks were above and beyond their abilities and confidence level of the motley crew of this disciples, they needed the authority of Jesus. They needed to be endowed with his power if they were going to do these things, yea, if they were going to do any of them. Jesus was calling and commissioning them to be a positive influence in the lives of others. As they were going about the Lord's business, their work was sure to bear fruit in them for the glory of God. For theirs was an important work. It was a matter of life and death, as is ours today. And then there is the final reminder of Jesus. It is a word of grace. Freely you have received. Freely give. You did not come to me with qualifications that caused me to choose you, but it was my call by which you were qualified. Never forget that your calling has been freely given to you and that you've received this grace by no work of your own. In that spirit, share freely with others. Let love have no boundaries. Let mercy have no borders. Let compassion have no barriers. Let truth take no bribes. Let justice be blind to skin color and gender and social class. You are my followers. Now you are being sent by my authority and for my purposes. You can expect the same sinister slander to follow you. You can expect the same fake news to be fabricated against you. Don't let it dissuade you. Be steadfast in your work, knowing that it is divine work, for it is God's harvest field in which you labor. And together we will accomplish the healing and redemption of all of my Father's world. The harvest is plentiful, I tell you. Success is assured. Who's ready to get to work? Come together, you motley crew. Lay down your petty politics and your personal preferences. Come together to work for the common good. We've got good news to share. Solace for sick minds health for diseased bodies, hope for those who are in despair. Who's ready to get to work? We need you, and we need more of you. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to quicken sleepy and slumbering souls, to ignite a fire of passion in heavy hearts. Pray to the Lord of harvest 
to raise up messengers of hope, to grasp hands of those who've had enough of the ordinary and who want their lives to make a difference in the world and to leave behind a lasting and meaningful legacy. Who's ready to get to work? It begins in praying to the Lord to raise up and send out workers. But I will warn you, it is not by any means a safe prayer. It is a dangerous and powerful prayer indeed. For you will find that as you pray, you'll feel your own heart impassioned and your own hand grasped. Don't resist. Let God lead you into his harvest field and God will be with you to make the most of your days for his glory and for the benefit of all God's people. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we bow our hearts in humble adoration and we give you thanks and praise as we go about your work in this Pentecost season, a season of renewal and growth. We lift before you your servants in special need of your healing power and care. We lift before you Beth, Dick, and Dawn, Dorothy, George, and Kimberly, Greg, Jace, Josephine, and Sam, May, Marcy, Nancy, and Thelma. We pray for those in New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts bearing the brunt of this COVID-19 crisis. We pray for decision makers, healthcare workers, food providers, that you would grant all that is needed. Grant us all patience and steadfastness to use this time wisely. And we pray for recovery, for a vaccine, for a cure. Lead and guide your people into your ways of truth. Gracious God, we long to come together in these days to worship with one another. We pray that you would grant us wisdom and patience, willing hearts to be considerate and prudent, that we might provide a safe place where we can gather with joy and undistracted devotion to you. This day we thank you for the wonderful gift you have given to us and those who celebrate their birthdays this coming week. We pray that you would richly bless them in the coming year with all that is good. For Anthony, Chrissy, Dolan, Glennis, Kara, and Marcia, we give you thanks. We lift before you Saratoga Mayor Miller and pray for him and for the Saratoga City Council that you would grant your wisdom, guidance, and insight, humility, and strength as they seek to serve your people of this community. We pray for Los Altos Lutheran, our sister congregation, and Pastor David, and the work that is done within and beyond their church walls for missionaries Kent and Sherry serving in Croatia, that you would bless their ministry and keep them safe in their work, and for the families of all those who grieve the loss of loved ones, including the Moyer and Wallace families. We pray that you would grant them your comfort and the peace that comes from knowing you have a home prepared for your people. All these spoken prayers and silent prayers of our hearts, we lift before you trusting in your mercy Joining together in the prayer, you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this 14th of June. Uh, please uh, share this with others, and I invite you back next Sunday, right here, as we continue in this Pentecost season. And now receive the benediction. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close with a piece appropriate for this Pentecost season, played by Elizabeth, O Day Full of Grace. Mm -hmm.